No Instagram, TikTok, or Rocky films. These are some of the craziest consequences if Russia ruled the world. To understand a world where Russia is the dominant power, we first have to understand what it is that Russia wants today. The invasion of Ukraine might have come out of nowhere for many people, but the truth is that this invasion was all but inevitable. And you might be surprised to hear this, but the US and NATO are not blameless in this. Certainly, it was Putin's decision to attack Ukraine, but NATO has seen the possibility of a conflict like this ever since the early 2000s, when they were considered formally including the Baltic states of Latvia, Estonia, and Lithuania into NATO. Time and again, Russia had warned after the fall of the Soviet Union against NATO expansion. And time and again, NATO ignored those warnings as it continued to expand east and into former Soviet republics. To be clear, we're not arguing that this was wrong. People should be free to dictate their own fate. And the Baltic nations feared Russia and felt they'd be safer in NATO's hands. Obviously, time has proven them right. The inclusion of the Baltic countries, though, put NATO forces on the doorstep of Russia. And for a brief moment, moment the world held its collective breath. Would Russia invade in retaliation and kick off a major global conflict? Thankfully, Russia didn't, but it's important to understand that this was a very real possibility, and NATO knew it. Expanding the alliance all the way to Russia's border was a red line all parties involved knew could trigger a military response. Instead, the conflict was delayed by a decade, when in 2014 Russia invaded and annexed Crimea. Eight years later, with Ukraine undeterred from joining NATO and the EU, Russia invaded the country with the intent of conducting a regime change. Vladimir Putin has promised that he does not intend to annex the former Soviet Republic or hold on to any of its territory after the war is over. But given that Russia has lied about preparing for an invasion, then carrying out said invasion, and not targeting civilians, frankly Putin can be trusted about as far as you can throw him at this point. But why was Ukraine ever worth invading in the first place? The Cold War might have ended in the West, but Russia has refused to admit defeat. And no one more so than Vladimir Putin, who still views his relationship with the West as a zero-sum game. There can only be one winner between Russia and NATO as far as he's concerned. This antagonism comes in large part from the shame of the Soviet collapse, but also from what has been perceived across much of Russia as the West infringing on the Russian identity itself. The spread of Western liberal values into the country, such as gender equality, support for LGBTQ communities, and racial harmony are seen by many conservative Russians as a direct attack on their identity as Russians. The West might have moved on from the Cold War social attitudes, but the Russians didn't, and the state of their defeat in the Cold War only adds to their indignation at what they perceive to be the penetration of their society by Western institutions. This is due in part to extreme conservatism amongst a society that was walled off to the world for nearly 50 years, but also because Putin has used the intrusion of these Western values as a chance to create ultra-nationalist propaganda. Russians under Putin must stand strong against corrupting Western influence that still seeks to destroy Russia, again in the mind of Putin, and thus by rejecting these values Russians can strike a blow against the West. For the most part, it's not the Russians that want to reject these values, but they've been made to feel like they have to because of the vile propaganda levied against them for decades. If Putin's going to defeat the West, after all, he needs domestic support to remain high, especially when the cost of antagonizing the West has historically been crippling sanctions. Another reason for the hostility between Russia and the West, though, is the matter of Russia's national security. Russia sits at the far end of the European plain, a vast swath of flat country that's notoriously difficult to defend against invasion. That's why Russia has suffered terribly over the centuries from European invasions. If Russia is to remain secure, it needs to keep potential adversaries at arm's length, and that means keeping them off their doorstep. With NATO already on its northwest flank, allowing Ukraine to draw closer to NATO and the EU was strategically unacceptable for Russia. Again, NATO knew this, and yet continued to flirt with the idea of Ukraine joining NATO on purpose. While there's no way to prove it, the invasion of Ukraine is exactly the scenario that NATO was hoping for, as it now gives the West a way to break Russia without directly attacking it. Sadly, the Ukrainians must bear the cost of Russia's defeat. So, what if Russia could achieve all of its foreign policy objectives? What would a world dominated by Russia look like? First, we have to stress, this is going to be pure fiction. Russia is not powerful enough economically or militarily to achieve anything that we're about to lay out. Under Vladimir Putin, Russia has become an isolated hermit kingdom whose economy is shattered and military is incapable of winning a conflict against an exceptionally weaker opponent. So buckle up, because we're about to take a dive into Putin's mind and imagine a world where Santa Claus is real, fairies exist, and Russia is the world's dominant power. First, to become dominant, Russia has to neutralize the military, political, and economic influence of both the United States 
States and China. A successful war against China is remotely possible for Russia. China's military might be big, but it still lags behind in modernity, and more importantly, it has no experience in modern combat. As poorly as the Russian military has performed in Ukraine, we can expect the Chinese military to perform even worse. But again, this is pure fantasy because, simply put, neither nation has the military might to completely neutralize the other. Instead, a war between Russia and China would drag on to become a multi-year stalemate where neither side makes much progress and both sides declare peace simply because the war has become so costly for them. Economically speaking, Russia has an even worse chance of neutralizing China as its own economy is a fraction of China's and shrinking. With the world blacklisting Russia since its invasion, it's lost any leverage it might have possessed over China. Both of those problems are only magnified exponentially when facing off against the United States. But the US has a third advantage, it wields far more political might than either Russia or China. The world currently exists largely under the leadership of the United States, who enjoys the benefits of having allies and strategic partnerships all over the world. But let's just say, somehow, the US and China are both militarily, politically, or economically subjugated by Russia. What now? First, we can expect Russia to export its model of authoritarianism around the world. There is nothing an autocrat like Vladimir Putin fears more than being removed from power, and Russia has a long history of violently removing rulers from power. Thus, to keep the world under Russia's yoke, we would see the end of the age of free, open media. Instead, news outlets would be nationalized exactly the same way they were inside the Soviet bloc during the Cold War. Information would be tightly controlled, and dissenting opinions violently suppressed. Those who defy the state would face steep fines or jail time. Though the more closely aligned with Russia a nation is, the more subversive an offender is seen as, worse consequences such as death are not out of the question. Russia currently ranks 10th on the Global Impunity Index for killing of journalists, but that's hardly surprising for a country that sent assassins all the way to Britain to murder a defector who slandered Putin's regime. Modern Russia tightly controls information, and it's learned to be quite good at it. While a few independent media outlets do exist, a rapidly decreasing number ever since the Ukrainian invasion, most of Russia's media is nationalized and gets its talking points directly from the Kremlin. Russia is adept at hiding suppression of free speech, as laws meant to protect the people, such as the current law that promises up to 15 years in prison for anyone speaking about the truth of the Ukrainian invasion. Russia's enacted this law to supposedly combat misinformation that hurt national morale. The right to assembly, one of the West's most cherished values, is also technically non-existent in Russia. So while on paper you are allowed to stage protests, you must receive a permit to do so. Perhaps unsurprisingly, you're never going to get that permit to protest something the state doesn't want you protesting. Russia has the vague appearance of liberal values, but is in fact one of the world's most autocratic states. What's important though is maintaining the illusion to avoid full-blown dissent and revolution. And this is exactly what you could expect to see happening in your own country if Russia ruled the world. If you don't like what Russia is doing, you better keep it to yourself. Because in a world dominated by Russia, your own government will punish you for speaking out. It happened during the Cold War, and it would happen again. To achieve this, Russia would install pro-Kremlin leaders around the world. Much like during the Soviet bloc days, you would still likely be allowed to vote, but only from a pool of candidates approved by your government, which itself would be handpicked by the Kremlin itself. Opposition candidates might even be allowed, much in the same way that they're allowed inside Russia today, but more often than not, these opposition candidates would meet with unfortunate ends. Many would suddenly be accused of tax fraud or similar crimes and imprisoned or disqualified from running for office, while others would simply be murdered. This was Putin's answer to the challenge from Boris Nemtsov, a Russian politician who publicly called for the public to march against Putin's government government for his invasion of Ukraine in 2014. Nemtsov was shot by an unknown assailant as he crossed a bridge at 11.30 p.m. on February 27, 2015. Life under Russian global occupation, however, wouldn't be all bad, except for being constantly spied on and having no civil liberties. Unlike the Soviet Union, Putin's Russia is not communist and has fully embraced a free market. After all, it made Putin personally extremely rich, though much of that wealth has simply been stolen from oligarchs that dared to oppose Putin. You could expect to have much of the same luxuries you enjoy today, and the global economy would remain largely undisturbed. However, you can forget about social media apps like Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. Instead, you'd have the equivalent of their Chinese counterparts heavily monitored and censored platforms where the government can and will punish you for producing material they find unacceptable for public decency. In both Russia and China's case, this happens to involve anything that goes against the official government position. Though thankfully, unlike China, Russia really has no problem with silly dances and K-pop boy bands, so you could still enjoy both. What the world would lose under Russian leadership
leadership is not so much its material prosperity, but its freedom of self-determination. The liberal values that Western democracies are built on would be stripped away one by one, because those same liberal values present a challenge to the authoritarian model of rule. Any opinion contrary to the official state position would not be tolerated, and your national government would be made up of Kremlin-approved leadership that works to support a Russian-first agenda. As Putin today gathers much of his support from ultra-conservative Russians, you can also expect to see a dramatic reversal in race and sex equality, as well as the rights of LGBTQ citizens. Nationalism would be on the rise around the world, though ultimately all would swear allegiance to one man and one man alone, your new Vladi Dadi, Vladimir Vladimirovich Putin. Thankfully, to even come close to achieving global hegemony, Putin would first have to neutralize both China and America. If Russia's invasion of Ukraine has proven anything, though, it's that Russia is completely incapable of such a task, and if anything, Putin must accept that he now lives in a world dominated by the West. Ultimately, it's up to the Russian people if they are willing to turn into a modern North Korea-style hermit kingdom, or if they'll remove Putin and his henchmen from power and end Russia's decades-long zero-sum game versus the world. Because while Putin is busy telling his own population that the West hates them, us Westerners are too busy enjoying euphoria, stupid TikTok dances, and the latest Pokemon game to care about a rivalry with Russia. Now go check out What If Russia Invades Ukraine, or click this other video instead.